The City of Parramatta Council acknowledges the Parramatical people of the Darug Nation as the traditional custodian of this land and pays its respect to their ancient culture and their elders both past, present and emerging. Members of the public, would you please note this is a public meeting that will be recorded and streamed live on the internet. The recording will be archived and available on Council's website. All care is taken to maintain your privacy. However, if you are in attendance in a public gallery, you should be aware that your presence may be recorded. Members of the public, would please also note that in accordance with the Council's code of meeting practice, the recording of Council meeting by the public using any device, audio or video, is only permitted with the permission of the Council. Recording of a Council meeting without permission may result in the individual being expelled from the meeting. Councillors, uh, I think we have a quorum now, I think. Yeah, we have. Um, do I have a mover for the confirmation of the minutes of the ordinary council meeting held 22nd of March? That's true. Oh, yeah. Councillor Tyrrell, Councillor... Uh, no, uh, no well, council, go with Councillor Esbar. Any discussion? If not, I'll put that all those in favour. Against, declare it carried. Councillors, are there any apologies for tonight's council meeting, applications for leave of absence or requests for remote attendance for a council meeting? And I understand we have already received a request by Councillor Issa. Um, so we have a we and it's been approved for Councillor Issa to, to attend by remote. Uh, any other, no one else? We have no others. I'll move that. All those in favour? Aye. Against, declare it carried. Okay. That's, thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, <laughs> councillors, are there any declarations for interest for this meeting? If not, no, there is not. Uh, we now have uh, three uh, minutes of the Lord Mayor, councillors. The first one is in relation to the uh, purpose of the minute is to recognise the passing of His Royal Highness Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh, okay. and show our respects for his commitment to Her Majesty the Queen and Commonwealth. The recommendation is the Council acknowledge the passing of His Royal Highness Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh. The Council note our own formal condolences to Her Majesty the Queen and the Royal Family are being prepared and will be sent via the Prime Minister's office. The Council note that flags were flown at half-mast across the city of Parramatta on the 10th, the 11th and the 12th of April in honour of His Royal Highness. That Council fly the flags at half-mast across the city on the day of the funeral in the United Kingdom as per advice from the Department of Prime Minister and Cabinet and that Council make appropriate arrangements for the condolence books to be set up at Councillors' libraries and customers' contact centre for a one-month period for the community to pass on their condolences and Council's website updated to provide the location list, and further that the Chamber hold a minute's silence as a gesture for respect for his service and commitment to Her Majesty the Queen and Commonwealth. I think everybody knows the background that the Duke uh, passed away on the weekend. Um, Councillor Davis. Um, Thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, I just wanted to make a suggestion for an amendment. I note that there are many people in our community who um, would like to write um, a message in a condolence book, but they may not actually have access to the internet and be aware. Would it be possible to have, make an amendment that a um, in your Lord Mayoral column this week that mention be made of the opportunity to to um, write a, men, a message of condolence. Yeah, sure. Uh, more than happy that, yes. Where did you want to put that? And uh, uh, in what part of that? In the, in the Parramatta News, I believe you have a column in, in, every, the, in the printed... Yeah. In the pr Parramatta Times, sorry. OK, so in the uh, recommendation, you want to put it somewhere in Yes, there? if you could just may add it into E, that um, Council's webs... And, for a one-month period, the community pass on the council's website updated to provide the location list, and that this this be advertised in any Lord Merrill columns, published Lord Merrill columns. Okay, happy to take that. Okay, I'm happy okay. with that, councillor. Right. Counts. Okay. Thank you, councillor Barry. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, Lord Mayor, would would you? be amenable to considering a further an amendment, namely that you, Lord Mayor, through your office, write directly to express the Council's condolences, um, because there is a lot of connections, historical connections, between this city um, and the Royal Family, and I think it's only appropriate in light of those historical connections that we take that extra step 
um, by expressing our condolences through your office um, to the um, happy to the with, to I'm, her happy with, I'm happy with that, Councillor. We, Thank you. We had that on the. Um, if Thank you, you very much, Lord Mayor. Uh, amendments there that I'll, that the Lord Mayor write direct to um, the Royal Highness or whoever we write to the Queen or whatever. Um, Councillor Wilson, you got a question or something? Yeah. Uh, I was just going to say, Lord Mayor, congratulations on this minute, and congratulations on my fellow councillors for their strong um, stand on this. I would say to that. I am a supporter of the monarchy, but not necessarily the family, if you know what I mean. It's a system that works for us. But you'd have to say uh, Prince Philip did his job. He was also a veteran through World War II. And I think some of the comments online have been very shabby and unworthy. Uh, he was certainly a man who tried his best all the time. And I congratulate you again on this minute. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, if no further discussion, I'll put that uh, Lord Mayor Mendel. All those in favour? Against, declare it carried. So, Councillor, second one I have is. is it... Oh, sorry, sorry. It's a, it's a one-minute silence. Sorry, apologies. Thank you, councillors. <coughs> Councillor, second uh, Lord Mayor on minute relates to uh, a condolence motion for Margaret McCartney. Um, the uh, purpose of the minute is to recognise the passing of Mrs McCartney and show her respect for her commitment to the local community. The recommendation is that council acknowledge the passing of Margaret McCartney, offering our condolence to her family and friends. Be that council note Ms McCartney's memorial service was held on Friday the 9th of April 2021. I was attended by Councillor Donna Davis, Councillor Lorraine Wern and Councillor Phil Bradley. See that the Council Office provide advice to the Epping Ward councillors regarding the memorials policy and process and investigate opportunities for the installation of a memorial bench or planting of a memorial tree in an appropriate location in Epping in honour of Ms McCartney. And D, further the Chamber hold a minute silence as a gesture of respect on her passing and in recognition of her dedication to the Parramatta community. The background, of course, is that Margaret Carroll McCartney, late of Epping, passed away on the 25th of March 2021, with a memorial service held on the 9th of April 2021 at Chester Street Uniting Church, Epping. The memorial service was, as I said, was attended by three of our councillors. Mr McCartney, who was a long-term resident of Epping, was a keen local environmentalist, an advocate for tree preservation, protection and planting, an active member of the Epping Civic Trust, Ms McCartney was involved in their subcommittee on tree protection and preservation and led the Save Epping Forest Park community involvement movement. Ms McCartney was well known in the area as a tenacious, passionate and dedicated to the protection and preservation of trees in Epping's local amenity. She was also a regular attendee at council and local planning panels, meetings, community events and community consultation sessions as a passionate community advocate. The local community will miss McCartney's passion, insight and community focus. Councillors, I put that, uh, council, that Lord Mayor minute to you. Is there any discussion? Um, I don't know, 50-50 here, Councillor Wern, or Councillor Wern, 50 Councillor Wern. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I'd like to speak to the motion for a couple of reasons. A lot of us knew Margaret, and a lot of us outside our ward actually knew Margaret, and um, had a lot to do with her over her last few years particularly of interest in what was happening in Epping. One or two of the things I would like to ask you firstly, if you would agree to a very small amendment, and that is that it be installation of a memorial bench and planting of a tree, rather than ore, um, other than that. But the, there's two things that I think make Margaret's involvement in the community 
really important to us from a psychological point of view. Um, Margaret had cancer. She'd had cancer for well over 20 years. And she'd been in remission for almost 20 years. Um, and then she became ill again in the last year or two. Uh, one of the things that I think started, from what I understand from her family particularly, started Margaret's interest with trees and her... She, was, she would hate to have been called, I have to say, a greenie because that's just not how Margaret thought. She didn't want to think about things politically. She didn't... And, and that connotation would not have suited her at all. However, the thing about trees and parks and green spaces was very dear to Margaret because when she first got sick, the very first time, according to her family, she got great solace from being able to go and sit in a park and sit amongst trees and plants and it helped her uh, get her head together, if you like, around her condition at the time. It also provided an environment that was away from from the hustle and the bustle and the bricks and the concrete and the china that we all have around us and it's particularly going on in Epping which is why I think she's become uh, so attached to those green spaces. They helped her, they eased her way over that time and that 20 years of remission. She worked very hard to get other people to be able to enjoy the same things that had been of such benefit to her. And I think it's really important that um, we recognise that trees and parks aren't just about finding somewhere for kids to go and kick a football, but it's all about there's, there's a psychological thing. Um, there's, there's something about green spaces that actually make our brains, I think, think differently. We, we calm down. We listen to birds and all those things that you just can't do in a normal house and amongst the brick walls and all of the things that we're seeing go up all around us these days with units, which is one of the reasons why Margaret tried so very hard to also have a word to say about the changes to our environment as we saw it happening, not only in our suburb but in many other suburbs as well. Um, and having spoken to her sister about this, it was very, very important to her that there be places where people could go, could meditate, just sit and contemplate their navel um, and, and have time to actually get themselves and their minds together and calm. And I think that's something that Margaret always was, calm. Despite all her fiery um, fighting for things, she was never... A, a loud or aggressive, she was always very calm about how she did those things. And I think that that has been a benefit that she gained from those things she espoused, and that's the trees and things that have been a part of her life in the most recent years. Um, and I'd just like to say to everybody that Margaret was a credit to our community. She worked so hard to try and maintain the things that to her were very important and to many of us as well. Um, we will miss her. We will miss her being on the phone and sending emails and saying to us, Councillor Wern, Councillor Davis, Councillor Tyrrell, what are you doing about those five trees that got cut down when they bulldozed that house? Where are the ten that are going to replace them? Now, but she was always very calm about it, but she always was there. And sometimes I think people in our jobs and public office need those people out there in the community that are always there that are always driving us to probably have a better outcome than we might otherwise have. And we will miss her. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Bradley. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I'd also like to pass on my condolences to Margaret's family and friends. And I had the privilege of going to the, um, the service, uh, memorial service at, at Epping uh, at, the, at the weekend. And um, it... It was very moving to uh, listen to the, um, the speeches and hear a lot about Margaret's background, which uh, goes back to uh, her studies in theology, uh, e e ecology, and um, that helped to explain why she had this really strong passion for protection of the, uh, the earth, the, the planet, and, and particularly trees. But, but her, her love and passion for preservation also extended to heritage. And I, th I think that's worthy of note that um, heritage is another one of the important, important aspects that Margaret was really keen to uh, preserve and respect. And she had a great love particularly for uh, Forest Park at, at Epping. 
She used that place for quiet meditation frequently, as Councillor Wern mentioned. She found that as a, it was a great source of, um, uh, con uh, uh, con what's the word, um, condolence, um, for, for, yeah, contemplation, whatever, when uh, she went there. And um, that, that's uh, an area to which we would hope that uh, a tree would probably be planted in that park. I would think that at least one tree. I think that's probably what the intention was of the, um, the memorial and the, uh, the tree reference. But um, I'm not an Epping Ward councillor, but uh, it didn't take long for Margaret to cotton on to the fact that I shared her passion for trees and uh, was, was happy to assist her, uh, her with some of her um, uh, emails and uh, some, sometimes complaints, but often very worthy suggestions. She was very quick to pick up non-compliance on DAs. I was just amazed how vigilant she was, checking v uh, DAs to see what the prescriptions were about um, what trees were to be removed, which ones weren't, and follow up to see if in fact that had been done properly and if the trees had been replaced when they'd been removed. So th that was very impressive. It was a rare feature, I think, of um, residents. Who, many residents are concerned and worried that there could be repercussions if they report those um, matters. But we should insist on compliance with what council's requ requirements are. So um, she was... Um, oh, another legacy of, of Margaret, I might just mention briefly, was that she campaigned for a banner, a tree banner. She saw that there were tree banners in other council areas, and I'm really pleased to note that um, council uh, staff have picked up on that suggestion and they were able to uh, have a, an, an excellent tree banner which will be flying on National Tree Day and other um, planting events around uh, the council area. So when anyone sees that tree banner, uh, I would hope they would think of um, Margaret's uh, great legacy uh, to this um, local government area and, and beyond because I know she also worked in this area beyond Parramatta, uh, local government area. So, thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Davis. <clears throat> thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, it was a privilege to attend the memorial service on Friday and actually have an insight into other parts of Margaret McCartney's life that, that those of us that um, knew her through our work in Epping um, weren't so familiar with. In, um, in particular... Margaret was so connected with the Uniting Church from Eastwood through to Epping and into Beecroft. She'd lived in the area. She had travelled extensively overseas, but she had predominantly lived in the local area all her life and had such a strong connection with her church and with her community. And I think that was shown um, by the number of people that attended on Friday. But the other thing that I wanted to mention was that you know, there's people of Epping and beyond, you know, uh, so many people would just have no idea of the amount of work that Margaret put into her community. For us, she may not have been considered silent, but for many people, she was silent. She was that person working behind the scenes and her intimate knowledge of the DAs and, and of what the requirements were you know, actually made our life as Epping Ward councillors so much easier because that was one t task that we didn't really need to be following up on as much because we knew that Margaret was there doing it and that she would bring it to our attention and the attention of council officers. And it, now with her absence, that is going to make it much more difficult for the Epping community to be aware of, of what what is happening and what they need to be vigilant about. And and you know it's I think the Epping Civic Trust who do a marvellous job will just feel there's such a vacancy within their organisation. Margaret knew the importance of stopping to smell the roses and I think it's very fitting that there was a rose garden in Forest Park and she was such a strong spokesperson for that park and for the whole of Epping and 
there's not much more that that we as a council can do to to help with her family but I think it is so fitting that we do find an opportunity to dedicate a seat and a tree in her memory so that people can take that time. Councillor Wern said it so so well that to contemplate and to actually realise the importance of these green spaces. It's not just about the principle of saving the trees. It's about what they do for each individual. They, they offer so much and these green spaces offer so much for everybody in our community. Everybody has different benefits from them and I think that Margaret knew that through her experience as a nurse, through her experience as somebody who, who was a very deep thinker and had very strong beliefs and she knew the importance of, of the environment. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Well, thank you, Councillor. Uh, any further discussion? Councillor Wilson. Um, yes, Lord Mayor, I only knew her in passing, but uh, she was a strong com contributor to the community and I would like to give my heart felt condolences to her family and to the community and also say she was part of a generation where they knew each other, where they made contributions to the community and I really worry about that we've seen um, lost, we lost Michael Morn recently, we lost Greg Mackay and we lost Saya Green, all of whom made a terrific contribution to the community and we're not seeing their like again I think because we live in a very uh, different world and um, indeed that often uh, people get peaks of popularity and it, it goes like um, we've seen former councillors who in their time would have had you know, 15,000 people at the funeral if they'd passed away 20 years earlier and yet we're a small coterie um, when, we, um, when we go to their uh, final resting places and um, I, I miss them and um, I just wanted to thank uh, Margaret particularly for her contribution. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, if no further discussion, I'll put that. All those in favour? Against, declare it carried. We now have one minute silence, councillors. Thank you, councillors. Um, Lord Mayor. Yes, councillor. Can I move a procedural motion that the uh, all the planning items be heard uh, now? Do you have a second for that? Sorry, Lord Mayor, just off the back of that, Councillor Reese has just boarded a plane. He's sitting in his seat and we'll lose him um, in a second. Um, and they're obviously the most important matters. Oh, there he, we go. He's not with Maybe us anyway. We've Lord, just... There's still one more Lord Mayoral item on the agenda. Yeah, there is. Well, and, uh, oh, no, he's back. So this is why we're asking because it is exceptional and it isn't a condolence matter. Um, Lord Mayor, that's why we're moving the procedural motion. But anyway, gentlemen, my name is Lord Mayor, I formally move that we stick to the agenda items on the paper and finish it off. Council, we have a procedural motion. I'll have to move that. I understand before you, Lord Mayor, there's a procedural motion. It's just like ramming and pushing something through, Lord Mayor. But we have, a, we have an agenda that the community is out there. There are people watching us online. And um, I just think we just need to go through the notions, Lord Mayor. It's, it's, I understand where it's all coming from, Councillor. Garrard, Deputy Lord Mayor, but we do have an agenda. It's been in print out there. The community knows about it. So I encourage you, Lord Mayor, not to accept the procedural motion that's put before you. 
Well, councillors, at the moment I have a procedural motion which if the councillor felt to withdraw that, we can continue with my Lord Mayor minute, which is still outstanding, or I can move the I'll move the Well Lord Mayor, once again motion. I'm not being difficult, but I'm asking you not to accept the procedural motion. I know it's been put to okay. you. Lord Mayor, I'm withdrawing it. Well, we have a withdrawal of the motion. Uh, we have a, a third Lord Mayor minute uh, calm and drive reinvigoration uh, project. Uh, Lord Councillors, the purpose of this Lord Mayor is to celebrate City of Parramatta's Council's win at the 2020 Institute of Public Works Engineering Australasia IPWEA New South Wales and ACT Awards presented on the 24th of March 2021. The recommendation is that Council note the City of Parramatta Council's Calm and Drive Reinvigoration Project. It won the Community Precinct Award at the 2020 Institute of Public Works Engineering Australasia. Mm. And uh, that was again as uh, said on the 24th of March. And the Council note that the West Epping Park Sporting Pavilion and Maintenance Facility Project received a highly commended award in the projects greater than $500,000 and less, and less than $5 million category. And, and see further, Council congratulate Council's cross-functional team who delivered these projects on this fantastic achievement and thank, thank them for their hard work and dedication in designing and delivering projects for the benefit of our community. Uh, as I said, uh, the little background is that op op the uh, uh, Carmen Drive opened in February 2020. The Carmen Drive upgrades included a new short-term car park playground, amenities block, streetscape and shop frontage upgrades, and planting of mature trees and a new expanded outdoor dining area. The upgraded facilities have made a big difference to the community with a new car park, making it easier to visit local businesses, and the new playground provides a great space for families to gather and have fun. So the fact that uh, uh, Council made this, won this award, and it's great that we have uh, been nominated and won it, so I think I'll put that Lord Mayor minute to you. Aye. Council, is any further discussion, any discussion on that? Councillor Jeffries. Lord Mayor, just very quickly, a congratulations to our staff on this um, effort. Um, they're both um, very strong projects. Come and drive as one that's due to my heart, obviously. But um, look, both projects are excellent projects. They're worth our while. And it shows what you, what you can do as a council if you're prepared to um, you know, listen to your community, listen to your councillors, um, and get the right outcomes. So congratulations. OK. <laughs> Sorry, Lord Mayor, just quickly, if I could speak. Um, we got an email today. Did the Wentworth Point receive a commendation in the same awards, or is it different awards? I think it was a different award. I think uh, I did get an email yeah, today about it. I'm category. not sure it was the same same ones, but I'd be, if I'm incorrect, maybe some staff member can tell me that I'm wrong. No. Mr. Greg, do you, am I right or wrong? Uh, oh, no, it's different awards, I've been award. told. No worries, thank okay. you, Lord Mayor. The, Councillor, the next item is uh, the public forum. Um, I think we have one public forum, is that correct? No public forum? No? No. Petitions, Councillor? Yes, Lord Mayor, I have a petition to table before the Chamber. Lord Mayor, I've, yeah. got, a pet I've got a petition here of approximately about 130-odd residents from the Outlands area, Lord, Lord Mayor, uh, signing a petition against the proposed driveway access from from the Pennon Hills Road into King School and also the no right turn from Pennon Hills Road into Golan Avenue, yep. Lord Mayor. The residents are quite concerned about that, that the King School have put in an application form in mm -hmm. and for a driveway to be put in about 50 metres on the northwestern side mm -hmm. of Golan Avenue and then they're proposing to have a no right turn from Pennon Hills Road into Golan Avenue. Lord Mayor, as you know that... Um, well, I, I don't think if you know, but I was raised in Golan Avenue, Lord Mayor. I lived there for many, many years, so I know that area well. And that no right turn is very important to the community of Oatlands because then if, they don't, if that is cut off, they'll have to go up to Beddington Road and increase the density of the traffic down there. And as you know, Beddington Road has a lot of traffic going through it at the moment. So I'll table this, Lord Mayor, to you. I've spoken to Richard Searle, the traffic the engineer at Council. It's before the Council now, so as you know, we can't get involved with any assessment. But Great. this is the views of the community up there, Lord Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Councillors. Um, if uh, we'll have to put that one, that motion, that petition. Uh, if we only have the one petition, all those in favour? Aye. Against, declare it carried. Uh, councillors, we now move on to uh, consideration reports, item 13.1. Second. Councillor Tyrrell's moved it, seconded by somebody. Councillor Esper, second. All those in favour? Aye. Against, declare it carried. 
13.2, adoption by Councillor Tyrrell, Councillor second by Councillor Bradley. Any discussion? If not, I'll put that. All in favour? Aye. aye. Against the carrot carried. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Item 14.1. Yes, Lord Mayor, I move adoption of this report, Lord Mayor. Can I move A as printed? Lord Mayor, B as printed. C as printed. With the new D, Lord Mayor, and I read out, and I think the minute clerk has the wording there, but I'll read it out for the Chamber. That the following stakeholders are made aware of the public exhibition of the Heart of Play Master Plan. Aye, that one, that all, Roman numeral one, that all current and former sporting user groups access playing fields in the Heart of Play Master Plan area. Roman numeral two. All park committees in the Heart of Play Master Plan area. Roman numeral three. All schools in the Heart of Play Master Plan catchment area. Roman numeral four. All registered respondents of the first round of Heart of Play Master Plan community engagement. Roman numeral five. All residents within a half a kilometre radius of the Heart of Play Master Plan area. And Lord Mayor, Roman numeral six. Advantages and disadvantages of the synthetic fields to come back when the report is made, when the report is written. And the E, Lord Mayor, that the Heart of Play Master Plan the exhibition is noted in the next Lord Mayor or column in the Parramatta Times and any electronic media, Lord Mayor. And I say that, Lord Mayor, that all the councillors here in this chamber, Lord Mayor, have worked hard on this, Lord Mayor, with, especially with councillors, uh, the Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Garrard, myself, and uh, Councillor Barrack, Lord Mayor. We've worked hard at this master play. It's, it's quite a big, it's quite a comprehensive exhibition. I encourage everybody, everybody that they can, to make a note of this and to make a submission, Lord Mayor, because I think it's very important that we do this and we do this and we get this done right. And I feel that with this, most of these parks, I think there's four or five out there, there's five of them out there, Lord Mayor, that the most input we can get, we won't get it all right, but we'll get a lot of it. There's a lot of user groups that have used this, and you know this area quite well. Dan Manor Reserve, Sherwin Park, Barton Park, Doyle Ground... And there's one more that just comes off the top of my head. I've just forgotten it at the moment, Lord Mayor. That those areas are very important. It's going to be a great... Old Sale Yards. Old Sale Yards. Thank you, Councillor Bradley. Old Sale Yards. So those five important parks. Old Sale Yards was with the Leagues Club, but now it's back to the community, or the Parramatta Football Leagues Club. And now it's back with the community, which I encourage everybody that they can to get out there, make a go of it, put it, give us all the input. I'm looking forward for this report to come back to this chamber, Lord Mayor, so this council can adopt it and move forward with the plan. Thank you, councillors. Any further discussion? Um, well, Councillor Wern. I, yeah. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I just have a question. Um, this isn't my ward, and I've not been closely involved with this process, but can I ask, as part of this process, is there somewhere in this report that we're talking about um, the pollution, the asbestos? Yes. Because I recall Barton Park in particular... It was locked down while we had to do a lot of work about removal of asbestos. I'm just concerned about that it be properly dealt with in here because I'm, this area, I would have thought, was one of the fairly heavily polluted areas. That was all. I just wanted well, to just make get, sure I'll that get, was in there. I'll ask this council staff member to, to clarify for you so you feel comfortable about it. Mr. Mr. Yeah. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Lord Mayor, and through you, uh, thank you, Councillor Wern, for your question. Item 8 of the report addresses Dan Mahoney Reserve, which is an existing project in Council's Depot for asbestos remediation in the coming financial year. Barton Park? Yes, Barton Park, we asked. Is that the one as well? No, that's Barton Park. There isn't a... Officers are currently unaware of um, significant contamination at Barton Park. The investigation work hasn't been done at this stage to understand the full scope. The oval that's being remediated um, presently is Dan Mahoney Reserve. It's Councillor Davis had her hand up first. Councillor Davis. Councillor Davis, yeah. Sorry, Lord Mayor. Um, Lord Mayor, um, thank you. Look, I want to congratulate the staff on this, on all the work that they've been doing and all the, the, the three ward councillors for Dundas for this heart of play. It's a fantastic idea. And um, anything that we can do to integrate our open space and make it more um, make it more available and accessible for the wider community, the better it is. But Lord Mayor, I can't help but be a little bit concerned about the fact that this is one of many master plans that our council has currently that have no money f assigned to them. We've got the George Kendall park happening. Now, yes, we do have some funding for that, and so there should be, given the amount of development that's going to be happening at Melrose Park. 
We have the Dense Park Master Plan, the Rydalmere Master Plan, the, the Garside Park Master Plan, the Belmore Park Master Plan, and now we have the Heart of Play Master Plan. All master plans, all dealing with the same issue, and that is funding. And it's an, it is great that our council is investing in the master plan because we all know that without the master plan we can't secure the funding from grants. That is a given. And it's important that we, that, we walk, that we crawl before we can walk. We need to be able to establish what it is that the community needs. And the master plan process is a fantastic opportunity for the community to actually engage, for the community to be able to provide us with the information that we need so that we can plan into the future the facilities that are, dis that are needed. But I can't help but think that... We are in a situ we're in a bit of a nexus here. We're in a situation where we're being pulled and pushed for more and more development. The state government has given us targets that we have to reach as far as providing housing for this city and for the whole of the central, central city and for the whole of Greater Sydney. But where is the funding for these open spaces and these sports fields? We, can, we see it every ward is in the same situation. We had a workshop this week where we talked about how we're going to find the money to, to do the work at Garside Park. Where are we going to find the money to do that amazing master plan that we have for Belmore, for Belmore Park? Where are we going to find the money to do stage three of stage two and stage three? Thank you, Councillor. Is it Councillor OK? Sorry, 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 somebody, one of the councillors was speaking. Okay. Sorry. Um, where are we going to find the money to do the stage two, stage three of Dents Park? And the, we've been told in the other day the question was asked about, asked about Garside, like where's the, where's the grants? Where, where's the state government funding? They've done the Parramatta Road works. They wanted to make Parramatta Road be this wonderful new artery with all these new development, but where's the money to fund the green open space that we need? And you speak to any of the ward councillors in that, well, in that ward and they, they know very real how real these issues are. They're sitting in Wentworth Point with a park that's been waiting for six years that still hasn't been funded. So I commend the staff and I would definitely support this master plan. But I wonder at what point do we actually get some definite, definite funding from the state government to push through these master plans so that we can deliver the open space and the sports fields that our community wants and needs. Nobody in our community wants to be paying more fees. That's the last thing they want. And they don't want to be paying more to, car to park their cars. I mean, people don't want to be paying to park their cars around Doyle Ground so that they can use the playing fields. And they certainly don't want to be charged money to be playing recreational soccer with their mates on a Sunday morning. And none of us would want that to happen either. But we have to find ways to find revenue. So I just put it to the Chamber that that... By all means, we need to support these master plans and go forward with them, but we have to be realistic about where are we going to find the money and who is going to do that advocacy to the state and the federal government. Now, we're fortunate we're in a Liberal state seat, so, you know, money should pork barrel along, and that, that could be a good thing. I mean, we got it for Rydalmere for the soccer fields. We've seen that happen for us in, in, in um, Epping as well. So, you know, you never know your luck. Don't know quite what our chances are at Wentworth Point, but, you know, we'll keep pushing. But, but you know, this is, this is really a very real problem for Parramatta and beyond. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Garrard, did you have something before you, you were going to say something? Yeah, I just um, wanted to point out the other park um, that Councillor Wern was referring to was down in the Little Athletics Park, I think, and that already had its remediation last year, yeah. um, separate to the master plan, because um, it needed to be remediated. Mm. So just to give her um, some ease. Some comfort, and just yeah. quickly on the point, I don't believe... Um, because of lack of funding, we need not to be considering master planning. I think that's part of our role, being strategic and ensuring that certain plans are in place 
So come time for funding, we are in a position to move forward mm. um, and master planning seems to be the way that happens and it's a long-term approach. Um, but it also puts us in a position where in some instances, as it was in a council that I observed for 20 years, sometimes parks get done bit by bit. No one has the money to do it all at one time. This is also an avenue to highlight which aspects of a plan can be done at, at what time. This is, um, I commend Councillor Esbar on his amendment and the plan on a whole. Councillor Bradley. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I just have a question and it uh, arises from Councillor Wern's uh, comment. I, I know uh, we have had considerable amount of money spent, it runs into millions of dollars, I believe, on asbestos remediation. And this arises from, uh, largely from James Hardy legacy uh, fill. And uh, that has been a major problem across our, our parks. And uh, I understood there, there was considerable work at Barton Park, as, as Councillor Garrard uh, refers to. But there is still great concern about Dan Marnie um, Reserve uh, in, in terms of the extent of asbestos there. And some time ago, I, I understood, and, and I've asked this question before, and I'd, I'd ask if uh, someone could respond, if not tonight, uh, at, on notice, um, how we're faring approaching in approaching the state government for some compensation with respect to the James Hardy site, Phil, Point where, of order, Lord Mayor. There, Count, point of order. There was some Count, point of order, order Count, Lord Mayor. Yes, Sorry, Count the James order. Hardy site has nothing to do with the master plan. And Councillor Bradley raising James Hardy and asbestos, as important as it is, takes away from the fact that we're doing a great thing here now with master planning um, the heart of the play area. Um, but it's uh, it's nothing to do with staff yeah. have taken into consideration remediation. This is strategic. We're over yeah. it. Yeah, I, I agree, sir. Councillor, 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 you have plan of order. You're I finished. move the motion to be forward. Councillor, Councillor Bradley, well, the motion is that need to speak to the matter at a hand. If you want to raise a separate notice of motion on the Alamo, well, fair, fair enough. But at, at the moment, we're talking about well, this I, part I think, of play. Lord Mayor, I believe it does relate to, to the, the proposal. It's part of the master plan remediation of that park. And, and there are costs involved, which we've been looking at. And that was raised appropriately, I believe, by Councillor Wern. So I think it's reasonable for us to make an inquiry as to yeah. well, we'll whether some of the state yeah. government's commitments to, to assist in funding that remediation. Okay. Well, I whether agree. we can. We'll just take your question on assistance. notice and uh, bring it back thank, to the next. Thank you, Lord. Okay. Second. Uh, no. Councillor, uh, no first. Can I put that? All those in favour? Against? Declare it carried. Item 16.1. 16.1. Have we got a motion? Is it Councillor Tyrrell? Second, uh, moved by yes, but second by Councillor Tyrrell. Any no, Penny. Penny, sorry, Councillor Penny. My apologies. Councillor Penny moved. Councillor Tyrrell second. Any discussion? If no further discussion, I'll put that. All those in favour? Aye. Against, declare it carried. Item 17.1, Councillor. Can I put my declaration of interest, Lord Mayor, on this item? You staying or are you going? I'll be leaving um, the debate and, and I will okay. not participate in the debate and I will uh, not vote on this matter. Councillor has uh, declared his interest in this particular matter. Thank yeah. you. So, Lord so Mayor, Councillor, I'm uh, sorry, uh, Lord Mayor, can you read out the... Yeah, yeah, it's the, a non-pecuniary and less than significant uh, uh, interest, uh, but he just feels that he should leave the, uh, leave the room. Yeah, this matter was with the panel, which I was a panel member on. Um, so, thank you, Councillor. So, you leaving the room? Councillor Issa's hands up to Lord Mayor. Yeah. Lord okay, so, Councillor. You're, you're, yeah, Councillor Issa for the me. same reason. Okay, thank you. Hello. So, Councillor. Yes, please. Lord Mayor. Hang, hang Which on, one man. are you calling? Uh, well, Pandy was there. I think Tyrrell was the, was the second. Or, were you the mover? I, I have to call for Tyrrell. Sorry. Councillor Tyrrell. Uh, Lord Mayor, I'm moving the uh, recommendation except for in item A where it says option A. I'm moving uh, option B, Lord Mayor. Option B. Do we have a second for that option yeah, B? Councillor. Move an amendment. Yeah, the yeah. Rec recommendation is printed with option A. Option A. Do we have a second for that? Yeah. have a second. Okay. Any discussion? If no discussion, uh, we'll move the amendment uh, by Councillor uh, Esber. All those in favour of the amendment by Councillor Esber, please your hand. Sorry, Lord. I thought 
thought you were going to speak. No, no. Oh. I've, I've called it now. I've called it. Okay, so they might, please raise your hand. It's a planning matter. Um, so, Councillor, starting from this side, I suppose. Uh, Councillor Bradley, Councillor Esper, Councillor Proseph, Councillor Davis, uh, Councillor Barrick, uh, Councillor uh, Wilson, and Councillor Wern. All those against? Uh, Councillor Jeffries, Councillor Tyrrell, Councillor Zeta, Councillor Garrard, and Councillor Dwyer. I declared the amendment uh, carried. I move the amendment as the motion. All those in favour, please raise your hand. So we have to go through it again. Councillor Wern, Councillor Wilson, Councillor Barrick, Councillor Davis, Councillor Proseph, Councillor Esba, Councillor uh, Bradley. Uh, all those against? Councillor Jeffries, Councillor Tyrrell, Councillor <coughs> Zeta. Councillor Garrard, Councillor Dwyer, I declare the motion carried. Item 17.2. Receive a note. Uh, do you have any second for that? Second, second Councillor Bradley. Any discussion? If not, I'll move that. All those in favour? Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, forgot. Can we ask for Councillor Bradley? Thank, thank you very much for that. <laughs> Councillor Issa stayed on the screen. Um, Did he? And Councillor. No. Is, oh, right. Councillor. Councillor is, Councillor Issa is back on board and so is Councillor Penn in one moment. Councillor Issa and, and Councillor Penn, in your absence, uh, a motion was moved on 17.1. Uh, 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 it was second option. Option A, was it? Option A was carried. Option A carried. Sec now moved to 17.2. We have a motion for that from Esba, second by uh, Bradley. Any discussion? If not, I'll move that. All those in favour? Carried. Carried. 17.3, councillors. Councillor Garrard, Councillor Tyrrell. Uh, any discussion? If not, I'll put that. All those in favour? Against? Declare it carried. Uh, we now move on to notice the motion to celebrate the International Day of Disability, People with Disability by Councillor Pandy. Second. Councillor, yeah, moved by Councillor Dink, second by Councillor Barrick. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Lord Mayor, um, the motion is about. Um, uh, us as council celebrating 3rd of December, um, which is uh, uh, internationally, um, it's International Day for People with Disability. Uh, Lord Mayor, as the motion says, the aim is to celebrate the achievement of people with disability uh, and provide an opportunity to educate people in, on issues around disability, promote Parramatta as, as, as an accessible and inclusive city, uh, connect uh, providers with people with disability, and involve local organizations such as New South Wales Deaf Society, Vision Australia, North Court, uh, Muscular Dystrophy Association, uh, and a range of other organizations who are in our LGA. Uh, Lord Mayor, as we know, um, one in five people have some form of disability. And uh, within our LGA, that's 20% of the population. I think it's absolutely important that we acknowledge the contribution of people with disability and there is no better way, um, or one of the way I should say, is to acknowledge their contribution on International Day for People with Disability, which is 3rd of December. Um, what we are asking for here is a report to come back to council in eight weeks' time with um, uh, some suggestions as to what can be done on the day. Um, and as I said, it should be an event which we should uh, celebrate on a, on a yearly basis, uh, involve the organizations uh, who are mentioned in the motion, uh, with their support, um, I think it's, uh, it is really important that we um, uh, support and acknowledge the contribution of people with disability um, and welcome to them to the LGA. I'll leave it there, Lord, Lord Mayor, if any questions. I'm happy to answer any questions on this. Councillor, just my question is, you've asked it to be within eight weeks. Um, is there any urgency for the report, bearing in mind Councillor Wilson has got some matters on the saying he doesn't, he gets left behind all the time? Sure. Uh, the urgency is, Lord Mayor, if there is uh, some finances involved, budget involved, uh, if we can put them through this uh, year's budget, if at all there is something. Um, obviously, the event will be in December, so there is plenty of time for that. But if the report can come back, if, if the report takes more than eight weeks, I'm happy for that to be extended as well. But uh, the rationale was that in eight weeks' time, if we have some report, we can um, then endorse that or at least consider that in this chamber and approve any appropriate you know, um, budgets. Any further discussion, councillors? Councillor Garrard, you're speaking um, which way? 
Um, I'm speaking against the notice of motion, Lord Mayor. Um, I've got two family members that um, have a disability and believe that um, everything Council already does is a mass support to people with um, disability. And it was true at the time in 2013 because I remember being a little bit disappointed um, that the issues that the Access Advisory Committee did range, um, raise were very valid. Um, and I think the fact that we've been continuing to acknowledge the day with a number of events um, at this point in time prior to a new council um, being elected and so close to the budget being due without any financial implication noted. And I appreciate that Councillor Pandy A has asked for a report and I'm disappointed that as I've been saying for three years of being here, the financial implication should also cost, should also include the cost of pulling together a report. That's staff time, that's costs that are coming off other projects. However, um, there's also no um, costing in relation to that. In eight weeks' time, if a report comes back, we will have already be in the position of finalising the budget prior to June 30. We're already at the end of April and if you look at how many meetings that we've got through May and then it is June. So um, I don't believe those time frames are, um, but away from time frames, I guess that's just sort of picking at the notice of motion in itself. I believe council does a lot and if we have meetings and we go out and we have consultation and it comes back that there may be something additional we can do, I would consider supporting that. But I think at the moment, from my understanding, the community is really satisfied with how council does engage with um, groups of people that have disabilities. And I think that we should, be continue, we should continue to review it. And if there are ways we can improve, you know, that's what we consider. But I think also Councillor Pandy needs to be aware, if he hasn't already, go, go back and actually have a look at the Access Advisory Committee's meeting and those outcomes that were taken into consideration when the event was cancelled. Any further discussion, councillors? I think we got a report or a response from the staff here anyway, didn't we, on that? So I'm sure everyone would have read that. Um, if, if no further discussion, Councillor... Yes, one against, you can speak against. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Yep. Lord Mayor, I have gone through the ex report. I have also gone through, for the last two years, I have asked for a report on what we have done on that on 3rd of December. I have one of the email from last year, 2020, and uh, what I see is not in, nothing substantial that we have done. We rely on other providers to, um, to promote the events, to promote the day, but council has not done much in the past couple of years that I have been following up on this. Um, I believe that there is a need for us. I don't think the community is satisfied with what we are doing, and I feel that uh, there is a need for us to do more. Uh, as I said, I have the email in front of me as to what we have done last year. Uh, it's not substantial. It's not something which we have done uh, in proportion for what we do for other events. Um, and uh, you only have to speak to the Access Committee to get some feedback. I'm sure as part of this exercise, this staff can speak to Access Committee, get their views as well. And if they say we are satisfied, let, let's not have this. No problems at all. But I think uh, we should get their views. Uh, in terms of budget, Lord Mayor, what are we talking about? You know, this is not in a budget that we have. We have moved, and if I can remind Deputy Lord Mayor, we have moved stuff in this chamber on the floor, and we have approved these sort of budgets. So let's not talk about the budget. Let's talk about the idea. Let's talk about the merit of these ideas and not the budget. We'll find this money, I know. And if we, if we say that this, if it costs 5000 or 10000 if you're saying we can't find this money, let me have a look at all the entire line items in the budget. I'll find some money in the budget. So let's not talk about the budget in this case. Let's talk about the idea and the merit of this event. Thank you, Lord Mayor. If any, any further discussion, if not... I'll move that notice of motion by Councillor Pandy. All those in favour, please raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, is it? All those against? 
I declare the motion carried. Uh, item 18.3. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Lord 18.3, is it? 18.2. No, 18 two. Two, 18 two. Sorry. Thank, yeah. thank you, Lord Mayor. I move this notice of motion in my name, Lord Mayor. Yeah. And this is uh, a bit late coming, but it's eventually here. We're going to have a trial coming on very, very soon. You have a secondary mm -hmm. council, I presume, maybe. Yes. Oh, Councillor Prosev, thank you. Lord Mayor, this is as. It's Councillor Wilson. Wilson. Councillor Wilson, sorry. Sorry, sorry. The council investigate the cost benefits and the feasibility of transitioning to a food organics FOGO service for residents under the next waste collection processing tender contract. And B, further that a report brought back to council with a new financial year with the outcomes of the food organics collection trial for multi dwelling and workshops to be organised with councillors to determine the viability of introducing a new FOGO service across the city. Lord Mayor, composting is coming on. It's coming on quick, thick and fast through the community, Lord Mayor, and there's lots of ways you can do it as uh, we can do it uh, how we do it now. And this is a new program, Lord Mayor, that it's Parramatta Council is one I'd like to see this city get involved with. There's other few other councils that are doing it. And from my feedback from talking to residents in those communities, family members and friends, it's going off, it's working out in a real big way. What I'm extra happy about this, Lord Mayor, it's cost neutral to the city. There's a $180,000 budget coming in from the state government, from the New South Wales EPA. And we'll be trying it over a thousand multi-unit dwellings through our complexes, Lord Mayor. I'm advised, Lord Mayor, currently that the city, that the LGA of Parramatta is about 30% of apartments, Lord Mayor. In the next 30 to 40 years, it'll be up to close to 60 to 70%. So we've got to get on the front foot on this particular, Lord Mayor. Next thing that we would have to discover, if this gets off the ground, Lord Mayor, is in our DCPs that we have, we have organic shoots in our multi-unit dwelling buildings, Lord Mayor, because. At the moment, we've got a, a garbage one and a recycle one, so that means another chute will have to be installed We're in there. And I do understand the problems with it, that people will put rubbish or recycle it down this, but it's about educating the community, Lord Mayor, and educating the people who move into these kind of dwellings and these houses and dwellings that do this. We have to educate them and let them know that this program is happening. I'm very excited about this, Lord Mayor, and I'm looking forward to the results of what the feedback will be. Lord Mayor, as councillors, there's 14 of us in the chamber, through you to the relevant officer, Mr. Warburton, I don't think he's here, but I think Mr. Leith is filling in for him. If councillors, there's going to be a thousand going out. If councillors can each be serviced with one, so we can start them off in our own places, like out of the thousand, can 14 be delivered to each and every councillor here, so we can try them off in our own homes? Uh, Mr. Well, so we, well, well, it's the last Mr. Leith, he's asked the questions. Mr. Leith, can you sort of give us some insight? Sorry. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Leith. Through you, uh, Lord Mayor. Uh, we've looked at the logistics of this and initially what we've looked at is a number of suburbs that were able to do it. We wouldn't be able to do it across all five of the wards for logistical reasons. I'm talking about 14. Bring 14 to council one night and we'll take them home and yeah. then we can try them out. That's what I'm saying. That's, yeah. trial That's not a problem at all. You're happy with the trial There's 14 councillors. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We could do that. That's not a problem. All done. Yeah, happy with that. Yeah, happy with that. Any further discussion? Um, if I don't finish here, I don't know. Um, Councillor Bradley. Yeah. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Yes, You're like speaking uh, in favour, I presume. Yeah. Speaking in favour. I'd like to uh, commend Councillor Esber on, on this motion. I think it's a really important motion and it's uh, long overdue in many ways, but uh, it's good to see that other councils are already picking up on this and uh, Parramatta is hot on their heels with this trial. Um, and uh, it, it, we really have to seriously address our waste problem and there's important educational processes which I know our team is engaged in in terms of ensuring that there is minimal, if any, contamination in this process. So I see this as a really positive step to uh, reducing, seriously reducing our uh, waste to landfill, which is a growing uh, enormous problem and a very costly problem. Um, I just uh, ask if there's a little bit of latitude. Maybe I should ask a question. <laughs> Uh, on this, Lord Mayor, I, I note the recommendation says the report should be brought back in the new financial year, uh, which is June 22, yet the staff have suggested that um, they would recommend that the report be brought back after the completion of the trial in May 2022. So it's a pretty tight time frame, but I'd just ask if, if uh, the staff think that's still achievable in June, straight after the trial ends in May. And if not, if there could be a little bit of latitude given in, in discretion in terms of when the report is brought back. Mr. Light. Maybe a small amendment. Mr. Light, can you help us in? Thank you. 
Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, the trial itself obviously is a six-month period and obviously commences and then the reporting is after the end of the trial and there's sufficient time to be able to obviously do that even in that tight time frame. Thank you. Councillor Garrard, Deputy Lord Mayor. You're speaking which way, Deputy? No, I'm speaking for it, um, Lord Mayor. I just wanted to ask staff, though, why is it being trialled in multi-unit dwellings and not residential <coughs> homes or single storey or whatever that, those dwellings are called, normal single storey dwellings? Because it says here that um, collection trial for multi-unit dwellings. Through you, Lord Mayor, to the relevant yeah. officer. Mr Light. That it is correct that uh, it, is, uh, it is only for multi-unit dwellings at this particular point in time. Yeah, why are we trialling it there? Because of the actual amount of waste that comes from the one location and actually being able to, uh, uh, what would you say, maximise the amount of money that we're able to actually expend on this trial period for the greatest volume of waste that's received. Thank you. You happy with it? It counts. Oh, no, I'm thinking. Yep. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Oh, I mean, I've, I've just got a question. Um, I'm interested, uh, I'm not unclear exactly what we're trialling. Now, <laughs> because um, whilst uh, we're referring to all nice and good things and supposedly environmentally friendly things, I, I'm just, un, I'm confused. My understanding was that the very first thing we talked about when we talked about this was the combination of food waste with green waste. Now, is that what we're talking about here? Is that what we're trialling? My first question is, okay, is it, are we trialling a combination of things in one container of food Mr. waste Light. and green waste? That's, that's correct. Well, in that case, I'll speak against it. Okay. Because um, if anybody lives at home and has a compost heap um, and anybody lives at home uh, and tries to maintain a compost heap and then puts food matter into that compost heap, it doesn't work. A, it smells. It doesn't. Councillors, Councillor Wern has the floor. Please. It only works Silence. if you are dedicated and very clear in your own division of items that what you're putting into a compost bin is compostable things. Not meat, not bones, not that kind of stuff. Now, I can't see how, I really cannot see how you're going to train people to stick their potato peelings in a bin, but not the scraps off the plate. Now, well, that's, no, that's my Council point. My question Council really is, floor, are please. we talking about putting all our food scraps and all of those kind of things into one container, which then goes into the green? Because if we are, I am definitively opposed to that. And if you've ever had a compost heap in your backyard and you start throwing chops and bones and bits of steak in and see what it smells like in your backyard. I, I vehemently oppose the combination of food products in general, food organics, with green waste. And if that's what we're trialling, I, for one, will be voting against it because I do not believe we should be combining the two. This is about, this is about trying to look good on the numbers. When you read this, this is all about reducing the amount to landfill. So to reduce it to landfill, you take it out, out of one wretched bin and put it in another. I mean, because the green bin technically doesn't go to landfill. I mean, what kind of a furphy is this? What, are, yeah, what, are you, what is this hiding? Because it really, it's still the same amount of rubbish, but you're putting the rubbish into a green bin because it doesn't go to landfill. Am I right? How do we dispose of the green waste? Does it go to landfill? Hang on, hang on. We'll give Mr Light to answer the it, question. We don't does it go to landfill? Mr Light. The, the trial itself isn't to actually put all the waste into the bin, as you just alluded to, as in the bones, the meat and everything else. Yeah. It's looking at taking all of the vegetable matter that would normally go into the uh, general waste bin right now and actually putting that into the green so that it then becomes a compostable, a com possible material that can be used. That's what the trial is for. So can I then ask, how are we going to do that in multi-unit developments? Because the green bin is a large bin outside in the yard. If you're going to put all your food scraps in, surely you've got to collect those in the kitchen. 
And you've then got to take those down to the green bin. Is that the idea? That's yes, the there's an inspection of that. And obviously there'll be an education package when this first goes out to trial. Thank you. Can I say good luck? I'll be voting against it. Thank okay, you. Thank you. Council, further discussion. Councillor Wilson, you're speaking which way? Uh, I'm in speaking in for it. Okay. Um, when I was Lord Mayor, I was approached by these people who do waste. And one of the things they do is they take all the vegetable matter, kitchen scraps, all that sort of thing. They put it into a gigantic great bin. They do all sorts of stuff to it. And one of the things they do to it that I remember is they steam it. They kill all the germs. All the germs in that... In all the germs are killed through the process. And that is what I would imagine the report will show. It says feasibility of it. So the object is not... You get garbage, any sort of garbage, whether you get it in the general waste or you get it in this separate green bin and you tip it around the streets, it's going to smell and it's going to be bad for you, Councillor Wern. I accept that. What I do think is, is that there is a technical solution... It has gone um, forward. There are many areas that are doing it. Again, you always get a problem with con cross-contamination, but you get that in your normal recycling bin now. And the way we deal with it is when it becomes a problem, the um, operator tells you it's a problem, and then you start putting up your normal people who investigate these things and you hand out fines to people who are behaving in the wrong way. So I do uh, accept what you're saying, but the government has a policy where they are really uh, hammering us with costs of um, rubbish removal and rubbish dumping into sites. So, again, it may not pan out, but the last presentation I had when I was mayor said that there were some very good technical solutions on the way. Uh, I think Councillor Esbear is quite within his rights to ask for a report on it, and if the technology isn't there yet, well, then we can put it off for a few years, but I don't see anything wrong with asking for a report that could potentially save this council a lot of money and produce really a fertiliser product at the end. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Barrick, you're speaking um, which way? I'm speak I'm, I've, I've just got a question, um, okay. Lord Mayor, um, through you, Lord Mayor, to Councillor Esber, and, and that is whether Councillor Esber would accept an amendment where the word organic is actually defined to include only vegetation material uh, because, because the term organic means something that occurs naturally and, and that may well refer to the things that uh, Councillor Wern was concerned about and I, th I think she had a, a good point in that respect. So if it could be defined that what we mean by the term organic as being veget vegetation or vegetation material, um, perhaps it should be... Um, Okay. We've, we've got there, it says... Um, Thanks very uh, much. Organic design uh, defined and, as a vegetation material. And Lord Mayor, whilst yeah. I'm on my feet, I would like to commend Councillor Esber for this very, very good motion and also acknowledge that the State Government is funding the, 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 the um, uh, resources to achieve this result. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. If no further discussion, uh, Councillor, in reply, yeah. Lord Mayor, I totally understand where Councillor Wern is concerned, Lord Mayor. And yes, there will be people who will put bones in there. Let's not deny it. But the whole idea is to put apple peels, potato peels, pumpkin, whatever, just organic material in there. And it does get separated when it gets to the other end, where they get separated from there with the plastic bags, because I've advised they're also biodegradable bags that we're using. That we get. Each, each bag, each bucket will come with a thousand bags in there, so Lord Mayor. So there'll be plenty of education. It's all about educating the process, Lord Mayor. It's, that's all it is. Like I said in my spill earlier on, it's about educating the process. It's going to take time. Will we get it right? Probably not. But you have to educate the community and bring them along with us in this program. Thank you, Councillor. I've spoken in reply. We ha only have the woman motion. A motion by Councillor Isbell. All those in favour? Against? Declare it carried. Uh, 18.3 is a Councillor Wilson's motion regarding savings from winter light contract. Uh, Councillor Wilson. Yes, Lord Mayor, but I congratulate the organisation on the great savings we've made on winter lights and have to say that after a being a councillor for 20 years, this is one of those bright moments where the, the officers have come back to us with a great saving. What I am worried, and I'll tell you this, is that everybody wants to sell... Do their, um, get their budget spent before the end of the financial year so that they don't miss out on the, um, the Council, allocation. Second, uh, Council, do you have a second or first? Yeah, second, Lord Mayor. 
Councillor who? Zeta. Councillor Zeta, is it? Okay, Councillor Zeta. If we got that on tape, would we? Yeah, I just. But I, it'll be good to see. Um, Councillor Wilson, continue. Uh, hang on, I thought I was speaking. But in any case, um, the savings from the contract, congratulations. But what I'm saying is for this three or four month period, that what needs to happen is that this, these funds need to be have the maximum use made out of them. They shouldn't be sitting there in a, um, in a fund. We ha all have in our wards many footpaths, many uh, drains, many culverts, many um, things that should be already spent. That, councillors, I would say to you that my experience is that when councillors take an interest in a particular item or project and push that through, council has traditionally gotten the best value out of it. And I can point to literally dozens of them. What I'm saying to you, by leaving that pool of money that they couldn't expect, they couldn't plan for it. They came along, they went out to contract, they got a thing, they've all of a sudden got a couple of hundred thousand bucks that they had no idea that they were going to get. So what will happen if you just simply leave it there, as happens in every, I can tell you as an over 20 year public servant, is that it will go into their budgetary contributions, that the fellows say we don't want it to get dispersed, so what we do is we simply take it away from the organisation, we put it into projects that we know should happen for the community at a time post-COVID when we know and the state government is constantly pushing us to make the expenditures we can and um, that, that is a very simple, easy way to do it. And then when it comes back 1st of July, they've got exactly the same budget they had last time and can say, hey, councillors took this because we had the savings, we want it back. And I think that that's the best way to go with it. I'd also say when you have a look at that area, events, etc., in council promotion, we have spent an awful lot of money. Indeed, as I pointed out in the uh, previously, that our at Parramatta may be a perfectly good promotion, but we've done it right over COVID. And indeed, I'm watching the ads there online and I'm thinking, oh, that's great. And we, I would dare say we got a sum total of zero visitors, etc., out of it, which is no fault of our section. They did a perfectly good promotion. They got hit like so many others by COVID. But I did say that we should have at that point then stopped it and then used that money either for promotion after COVID or on things that we can do now. So, again, this is no... In fact, I'm congratulating the staff that it's there, but I really believe, councillors, that we should have enough faith in ourselves and in the projects that we know that can deliver for the community in order to do this straight away. Uh, Ms. I'll just ask a question first, Ms. Hitchcock. Can you give us an explanation here, as I understand it, uh, the staff have made a, a great effort to try and reduce uh, funds to keep, you know, have additional funds for the events program, I would imagine. Can you get, give us uh, how we come up with this or what's, yes. what's your response here? Yes, through you, Lord Mayor. That's exactly right. So the savings um, from, this, from this event we're planning on reallocating to other events and we're actually taking it to a councillor workshop this week to make a recommendation on that. Thank you. Um, who's the first one? Councillor Tyrrell. Tyrrell. You're speaking which way, Councillor Tyrrell? I'm speaking against it, Lord Mayor. Mm -hmm. Lord Mayor, at the Finance Committee, and we've been working tirelessly on the budget to bring this in, there was a presentation that was made to the Finance Committee about the $400,000 that the staff wanted to allocate to future events for this $300,000. Uh, and the Finance Committee knocked that on the head and said that wasn't appropriate, right? Now, this is next year's budget. We've done the hard work on this budget. This is about events money, right? And let me say this. It has nothing to do with allocating money to urgent ward works. This is Pooh Bear putting his hand in the honeypot. It's, it's pork barrelling to the max. And Lord Mayor, I will never allow ratepayers' money to be used to do projects in wards just so we look good on our advertising election time. It is wrong. 
We sat there in the finance committee, we asked the questions, we've done the hard work. This is port barreling. We cannot allow this to happen. And let me tell you at the end of this, Lord Mayor, I will be getting up and I'll be calling for a division on this matter so that it's on the public record so that everyone knows who voted for pork barrelling. We are here to do the best thing by our constituents. We are not here to have our hand in the cookie jar. It's wrong, it's outrageous, and we cannot allow it to happen. And I expect that no one's going to support this because it's outrageous. Councillor, I, I might remind you, you can only have a division if you've got two, but anyway, Councillor Garrow, um, stand. Sorry, Lord Mayor. Um, I just wanted to say I, I don't support the notice of motion, but off the back of what Councillor Tyrrell has ma um, raised, he is correct. The Finance Committee did knock back an additional budget which the event staff wanted, but not this 300000 um, And I believe it has been because at the time the budget is being allocated to where we had shortfalls on some of the other events because, for example, and I don't know, I don't think it's actually been pinpointed to the chamber yet because the workshop is actually on Wednesday night, um, but things that are happening in Parramatta Park, those costs have skyrocketed and so forth. But the monies won't be allocated toward budgets. The city has a reputation of excelling um, and providing quality events, um, events that put us on the map, events that make us the envy of all our brother and sister councils. Um, so I continue to support the organisation and the decisions of the Finance Committee when it comes through um, in relation to where the additional monies is. However, we are mindful that if there is a way of saving, I think it comes off council's bottom line first in any which way, um, particularly when, you know, councils are deficit and we are trying to look for cost savings. Thank Councilor you, Lord Davis Mayor. Is up there first. Councilor Davis. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Look, I, um, you, you beat me to it. I was going to ask that exact same question about um, the about our ward briefing, Councillor Garage. You mentioned as well. There's actually a workshop this Wednesday where we're going to actually be discussing. Um, what this $300,000 could be used for. I think it's premature that this motion comes to the Chamber tonight when we haven't even had that opportunity as a, as a council to... Councillor, you'll heard in silence, Councillor Davis. Um, that it would have been premature, that it's premature to actually have a vote on this matter when we haven't actually had an opportunity for the council officers to present those options to us. I also note that um, in a recent, um, um, the relevant um, officer um, had met, uh, requested to meet with the councillors um, recently and in our discussion it was raised the fact that the money that's spent on events in our city is largely, not only, but largely generated from um, money from parking metres and as we all know, there's been very little action in the way of parking metre money in the past 12 months. In fact, given the fact that due to COVID, we as a chamber made a conscious decision to actually turn off um, parking metres at one stage, and then we've had so many of our parking spaces now null and void because of the Parramatta Light Rail, that means that there's even less income being generated for those major events. Now we've had week, meeting after meeting where councillors have stood and spoken about the fact that our city is struggling under the, the light rail construction. It's struggled through COVID and we know that we need to try to bring people back into the city. So I think that it would be remiss of us of a chamber not to give the staff the opportunity to present their ideas for that money that is there to see what we can do to bring people back into the city. I'm like any other councillor. I know that there's needs in our wards. We all know there's need. We could spend that money on... We could spend that money 15 times over. We know we could. But we also have a commitment to our 
to our city. We're, we're expecting people to build new buildings. We're expecting people to come and work in our city. We're bringing visitors to the city. We need to actually also offer opportunities for them to have events. And it was just said to me two weeks ago, not by one person, but two, two people, when is council going to have some free events again? Because of COVID, we've been ticketing events and that's a good thing. We need to be able to know who is attending. But we've also attached a small fee to those tickets. We've got an open air cinema in Dundas Park this Friday and it's five dollars. Free ad, sausage sizzle, drink and a movie. Fantastic. But it isn't a free event. But that's because we're wanting to ensure that people come if they're going to commit and and um, log in and register in advance. So there is a reasoning behind that. But people also in our city deserve to have free events again. It's something that we're proud of it's something we've delivered in the past and we should be able to deliver it again and I'm I'm definitely support this is support the idea that we should wait for a workshop to actually see what those ideas are thank you council Zeta <coughs> thank you Lord Mayor which uh, way you speak, you're speaking which way I'm Council? Lord Mayor I'm speaking in favor of the motion okay Lord Mayor what I'd like to point out is that Councillor Wilson has put up a motion here and all that I'm hearing is people trying to bring down a councillor for putting forward an idea. Lord, may I encourage people to put ideas? And We've had Councillor Esba with a great motion earlier about a great idea, which uh, the majority of the chamber supported. But, Lord Mayor, what I don't like is any kind of misleading statements or false facts that are tried to be portrayed as a fact. And Lord Mayor, I wasn't going to talk on this motion, but I felt the need that it's important that I did stand up here and did talk just to correct the record on a number of, of points, because I'm not going to say facts, but points that were raised. Now, firstly, uh, Councillor Davis mentioned that uh, events budget is mostly funded from car park in revenue. Now, the last time that I checked, I was not aware that we had a roving budget for events, which depended on how many cars decided to be parked in the CBD. Um, the last time I checked, events had a budget. So the source of the funding is irrelevant to the end expenditure because the end expenditure is tied to a budget. So that's the first fur fee that came out. Secondly, early in the night, Councillor Davis also mentioned the fact that we have a whole list of master plans and we don't have funding for those. I guess this motion, some of the money that goes towards the wards, could be used to help with those master plans to progress them. So that's the second, I guess, point I wanted to raise. The third point, um, Councillor Tyrrell, um, I commend the great work that he does in the Finance Committee and um, a lot of um, our, I guess, uh, success or ability to have gone through COVID pretty much untarnished was, I guess, from a number of ideas that Councillor Terrell put forward. But the, the statement that anyone is going to be pork barrelling, that's just complete nonsense. And, and I think that that statement is just to bring down a motion that Councillor Wilson has put up because no one here is putting their hand in the cookie jar, quote, unquote. Lord Mayor, ultimately, the $300,000... He no, and he also said time. hand in the cookie jar. Councilor, I've written it down. Councillor, let Lord Councilor, me, I'd like to be heard Councillor in silence. needs to be heard in silence, please. Councillor, deputy, please. Thank you, Lord Mayor. He's, he can, he's making a mess of it himself now. Let him keep going. Well, well, well Lord on. Mayor, Come I'm on. not making a goose of myself because what you and others in this room are trying to insinuate is that somehow we are trying to pull funds from our rate payers from another means. Absolutely not. The $300,000 is within the budget. So, the, so, you know, it's great that Councillor Turin wants to talk about the Finance Committee and all that kind of stuff, but at the end of the day, no one is saying that we want to have an additional $300,000 to be um, coming from general reserves or, or general funding or from any other source. All we're saying is there's a budget allocated to events. Point of order. The Lord, Deputy Lord Mayor keeps interrupting. Councillor... Uh, Councillor... Deputy Lord Mayor, please. He needs to hear it in silence. He's had a go. No, no. He had a go. No, because you know what? I'm sick and tired of the nonsense in this him. chamber Councilor where 
People want to go and spread, as I said, false facts. No one is pork barrelling. No one is seeking additional funding from the Finance Committee. This is redirecting funds that are existing in the budget. Money is there. We have a saving. Lord Mayor, I didn't support the idea of the Winterlight Village when this motion came up at the last council meeting. I don't think, Lord Mayor, that we should be at the adding a competitor to the residents of East Street, the business residents of East Street, Lord Mayor, when they have had to endure difficult times because of COVID, difficult times because of the Parramatta Light Rail. All that we did in that motion, Lord Mayor, was add a competitor to businesses that are putting their livelihoods on the line to sustain a business for employment in the city, Lord Mayor. What Councillor Wilson's motion is saying is we've got a $300,000 saving. There's a lot of work that can and should be done in our wards. We just want that money to be reallocated. Point, paragraph 7 of the motion, so paragraph 7 on, in our business papers, refers to if savings from Winterlight are moved to ward funding, this would result in $300,000 reduction in the overall budget for the events and festivals. Well, maybe, but at the end of the day, you had already spent the money. You had allocated it. But because we're getting a saving elsewhere, that money is not Council, being Council, spent. extension. All those in favour? Against the clerico. It was never... Councillor Zader, Councillor Zader, three, please. Councillor Zader. The $300,000 was not allocated to be spent on anything else. So we're not removing it from any event. So for anyone who wants to try to say that we're trying to cut events, that's not true. I just wanted to just verify a number of the points that were not factually pointed out. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Lord Councillor Mayor, Garrett, I've, got you've already I've got questions. One question. Um, so I'm yeah. not going to talk... Well, maybe two... To, through you to Mr Zamoulos, Finance Manager, Acting CEO at the moment. Um, I'm a bit... Um, I'll, I'll come to Council, my... Council, there's a question. There's not a lecture again. It is Council, Mr Zamoulos. Yeah, thank you. Is it common for Council to have money sitting in one cost centre, i.e. events, and take money from events even if there's a saving, and transfer it to ward funding. Um, or um, It's the same as we wouldn't take a budget of rubbish and then move it to pay for the pool. Uh, Mr Zamoulas, changing the... Because I, I know um, from my understanding and, and being on the Finance Committee, um, our line fundings are quite specific. Is that correct? Councillor, I'll get the answer, and that's a question, and that's a question. A question, that's an, my an first answer. question. First one, Councillor. Oh, right. Mr Smullers. Thank you, through the Lord Mayor. Why do I feel like I'm being fed to the lions? Um, <laughs> you never let me down, Mr Zamoulos. <laughs> Deputy Lord Mayor, um, you are correct. Normally within, the yes. quarterly, normally within the quarterly budget review, what we do is we outline a reduction in a budget correct. for one specific item and correct. increases yep. in budget for other, and yep. the council chamber votes on those Line as part up. of yep. the quarterly bud budget review. We don't normally just move correct. budgets around. Correct. Thanks. Second um, question. And, and, then, Second yep, question yep. and, and that then leans on to my disappointment um, in my fellow councillor as an accountant. That's and he completely, I know I'm getting to the question, Point of order. understands yeah, that. Um, it's a question. Give it time. To be a question, Councillor. Um, um, I've lost let her my yeah. Councillor Deputy Mayor. You ask a question. Please stick to the question. Thank you. I will apologise, Lord Mayor, for you to anybody. Um, so then that brings me. Um, oh no, that answered. I got the right okay, question. Thank so you. what he said was okay, wrong. Okay, Councillor Barrick, you're speaking which way, Councillor? Um, We've had two, four, and two and against. By Lord the way, Mayor, so I'm speaking. I'm speaking. I'm speaking against this motion, I think it's a complete and total absurdity. Um, so we have a saving. So we have a $300,000 saving and all of a sudden we must find a mechanism to spend it. I mean, how many things do we have in this, in this council, Lord Mayor, where we don't have a saving but we have a budget overrun? And His hopefully... next notice of motion. Blow Cou out. Councillor, Correct. councillor, please. So... I mean, we have to be fiscally responsible. We take the ups, we take the downs. And um, at the moment, um, there is a, a, a saving um, from the Winterlight Festival. And that money should be utilised uh, cautiously 
and and in a in a in a manner that is a studied manner. So the staff have already indicated, um, in, in answer to a question, that there is a proposal to have a workshop. Surely we must hear what they've got to say. Surely, but to simply um, acknowledge that, and we must acknowledge that there are funds, uh, ward funds, which have already been defined and allocated. This seeks to add to it. It seeks to earmark what is a, a saving or a windfall. It seeks to earmark it down the path of ward funds. Now, I'm one in favour of, of ward funds at, at, at any time. Um, however, it needs to be studied. It, it's, it shouldn't just be earmarked um, um, on, on the run in the manner that Councillor Wilson seeks to do in this motion and thereby avoiding the, um, the, the benefits that we may obtain from a workshop where we are informed and decisions can be made in an informed manner. Now, I, I hope and trust that the staff will actually deal with various options as to where these saving can be spent um, and would consider ward, fu ward funds uh, as either a positive or a negative so that we can actually have the full picture of what is proposed. But surely we should not be making a decision on the run right now in circumstances where ward funds have already been allocated and um, I think people are getting somewhat nervous in, um, because we're approaching a, a, an election and, and suddenly they want to grab some money uh, in, in order to spend uh, on, on ward funds. We, we've, we have to be fiscally responsible. There are councils who are getting themselves in trouble, some in administration, Lord Mayor, because they were not fiscally responsible. So we've got an overarching uh, duty, obligation to our residents to ensure that whatever decisions we make are made with the benefit of being informed by our uh, talented staff who have sought the opportunity to present a workshop and we should be giving them every opportunity to do so. And then we make a decision that is informed. We don't make the decision on the run. Thank you, Thank you Lord Mayor. Councillor Bradley, you're speaking which way. Uh, We've had two Lord for two to get to be moving the motion I'm moving after procedurally this. that this uh, motion be deferred to the next council meeting. I think it's appropriate that we do hear the workshop and Second hear that. opportunities. That's a, that, that's a procedural motion. Are you gonna, sorry, you're going to move an amendment, are you? Amendment, is it? Amendment for deferral. Um, okay, amendment for deferral. Well, you have a second. Yep, to second. the next council meeting. Yeah, you're an idiot. So we have a second for that. Huh? Yeah, we've got a second. The council of Councillor Zader. He's, he's, he's doing two so, of them. So you withdraw from the other point one? Point of order, Lord Hang on. Mayor. Councillor Zader. Sorry, it's so just a point of order. I don't think that the non mover of the motion can move a procedural motion on That's the motion. That's what I'm just saying. So Councillor Zader can't move two, can't second both motions. So but no, he no. can't do that either. But I don't think Councillor Bradley can actually move a procedural motion on it's not somebody else's motion. motion. He's moved motion. an amendment. He's moved an amendment, Councillor. Oh, he's moved oh, an amendment. Okay, that the so matter be deferred. Oh, we don't all... have a seconder for it okay, just yet. Sure. No seconder. No seconder at lapse. No. If there's no seconder, I've got the motion be put. Yeah. Now, it's we, motion be put. Have a second for the motion be put. Yep. All those in favour. Yes, right of reply. Yeah, right of reply, Councillor Wilson. Um, yeah, well, that was sort of interesting. <laughs> that, that, to begin with, Mr. Pooh Bear, I, I really believe that what I'm really? talking about here is, and you, when you talk about pork barrelling, he talks about events, things that don't build anything permanently, and in a post COVID environment, whilst in the middle of winter, if they're going to spend it before the end of the financial year. And he's saying that that's not pork barrelling, but me wanting to then do things like pedestrian crossings, things for children, paths so that women aren't pushing their prams onto the carriageway. Well, that, that's pork barrelling. And can I say to you, that we have a lot of respect for Councillor Tyrrell, but doesn't he always take the worst view of human nature? Never with himself. I'm only doing things for the best of reasons. But you, you, my friend, you're a terrible human being because you're doing something that disagrees with me. And that is really the whole yeah. of his argument. Then we come to people who are talking about being financially responsible, which I must say is a lovely, lovely change from all the years 
I have done cost savings. Do I really believe that... The, and to say that it's only motivated politically, I explained why. And I know it opens me up for criticism, believing that councillors actually have a set of priorities that deserve to be invested in, that you as councillors have looked at these, these programs and that you deserve the, count, the, the uh, ratepayers' trust, that, like myself, some of you have spent years at it. But, no, you should be dismissed with your priorities to the absolute bottom. And I had expected, I thought that perhaps Councillor Bradley with his um, plan on, uh, what do you call, uh, with his plan on the uh, solar panels, I thought that it might get snaffled. But again, what we are talking about with the whole promotional budget and why I thought you've all lost your mind is that going into COVID, going into winter, that I didn't agree with your first plan to do this big promotion worth millions. Remember when they put that on at the stadium? Oh, yeah, this is our thing. Mate, it is totally ridiculous the way we have spent the promotion budget this last year. Completely foolish. And yet, and yet when you try and say that you believe, and admittedly, you're all entitled to your opinions, but... When you try and say that shouldn't we do something permanently for the benefit of the ratepayer, you have the most disgusting and evil accusations levelled at you. That your Deputy Lord Mayor will abuse you because apparently I am less financially responsible than her? Councillor, please let the lady speak. After the way you lay Sorry, lines. Lord Mayor, that, I feel bullied. Oh. I mean, I've just been told that I abused somebody when I didn't. I spoke okay. very reasonably Counselor. and I asked a question Certainly. through Counselor. you. I can Counselor. see how Please. sensitive the, law, the deputy is on this, how she bruises like a peach, and I am so, so sorry. Again, that I point ever of offended. order. Counselor, Counselor, am, I, am I again okay. being abused because Counselor I'm female? Wilson. Councillor Wilson, it's not to oh, direct I, traffic oh. at a particular councillor. Stick she to the subject, to please. Stick to the subject, please. Thank you. Councillor? Lord Mayor, I move that the Speaker be no longer heard. Lord Mayor, we put it to a vote of the Chamber. Well, I think no, he's got, he's got a, you've got a couple of seconds. Wind up, please, Councillor. Well, I can see Councillor Esbeer, another defender of democracy. OK. So you as councillors, you have a right to make the decision. It would be perfectly OK if you came in and said, no, Councillor, we believe that it should go and spend in events. What is the big deal? We've done this at a hundred workshops. We've done it at a thousand things. But when we come to this change to winter lights, well, it's something different. That you can all take out your baseball bats because a councillor said he wants to spend this on pedestrian crossings and kids and that sort of thing. So, OK. I can, I, I can accept this, that there's clearly a belief in the chamber, that uh, all the money spent on events is well spent, that it should all just Councilor Zeta, please. into a quick thing. Well, again, I cannot see why the councillors are all so sensitive on this contract that apparently has saved us this money. I can't see why councillors no longer believe in their ability to decide on a budget. <laughs> this so is just absolutely unreal. Councillor Wilson, I think you wound it up, please. I think yeah, we're well, okay. again, Lord Mayor, all I would say to you is that I would ask the Deputy Lord Mayor to look at the tape of this after this is done. Thank you. Councillors, we, uh, we only have the one motion um, by Councillor Wilson, and I would say to Councillor Zeta, I've been down to speak to the restaurants down in Parramatta, and they're welcoming every event you can find. I spoke to them today, and they welcome us today. Point of order, Lord yes, Mayor. Councillor. If you wish to get into the debate, you know what you need to do. You have been in this chamber well, long enough. Councillor, I think you've had a good enough speak. Now, we only have the one motion. I'll move the motion by Councillor Wilson. All those in favour? Aye. Against? Declare the motion defeated. Councillor, we now move on to 18.5. Abstain? You can abstain, yeah. Well, you couldn't make up your mind or what? No, you can't abstain. You, you just don't. So you voted against. You voted against. 
he's not... Councillor, can we just get it right? Look, when you, if you haven't sustained, you've voted against. So I'll just ask the governors to speak. OK, it's, it's a procedural motion. OK, we're now on to 18.5, Councillor Wilson, prioritising council motions. 18.4, sorry, 18.4. 18 uh, yeah. Low out of council projects. Yeah, councillors, you... Have we a seconder? Any second? If it, it's a blowout in council projects. 18.4. Do we have a seconder? 18.4. No seconder? It lapses. Do we have no seconder? The, count, the notion lapses. 18.5. Uh, uh, Councillor Wilson, prioritising council, council motions. Councillor Prost, if you're seconding this or that? Yes. Council I, I would like to second. I, I, I am going to vote against this. I will tell you that now. But Lord Mayor, I want to ask a question. Councillor, we, we need a second of yes or no. I will second it, but I'm just making okay, my position second. clear. You can do what you like. It's second of yes or no. Councillor. Can, sorry, can you second yeah. a motion and I'm, vote against it? You can do what you like. You can do what you like. Yes, Council people often second motions yeah. so it gets discussed. Councillor. Yes, thank you. Lord, so I have a question. Yes, I have a question. Councillor Wilson, are you speaking? Uh, yeah, look, it just is simply that uh, recently in discussions with the CEO, he said we've got 1,300 motions before us. You can't expect one such as your one on child safety and getting overhead bridges and making that a priority. Um, as has happened in before, uh, and I do use this, and I use it because particularly I supported Councillor Prosiv's motion and thought it was a very good motion, but she was helped in this by knowing where all the reserves were and by allocating the money on the floor. The, the very thing that I'm currently being beaten around the ears on today happened with another councillor, and again, I'm not... Blaming Councillor Prosiv, and that is a good example because it is one of those ones that I think is a very fine motion and was happy to support. But what I am saying is that, councillors, I believe we need to have some sort of grip on the priority of which motions are being delivered when. And all I'm asking for this, if you have a look at it, is simply we get a report into how it's done and with any um, look at how we can improve it in the future. We're responsible for spending tens of millions, councillors, and how many times do things come to us at the last moment and they say, well, this has got to be approved by X date or else you've missed the fallout on this or that or the other. So all I'm asking for here is a simple report. Now, if you don't want to know how things are getting prioritised, that you're happy just to plant... Uh, motions off into the ether and you trust the organisation to that extent, well, that's completely your business. I just personally believe that as councillors, the general public expect us to be involved in this. Councillors, do we have any further discussion? I think Councillor... Yes, uh, yes Councillor, Lord Mayor. Yeah, which way are you speaking? I'm speaking against the motion, Lord against Mayor. Against the motion, OK. Um, my, I have real concerns and, and I'm very disappointed that Councillor... Wilson chose to use the Granville Master Plan to, um, as a comparison to the preservation of human life. And I really don't understand why he used it. Because the Granville Master Plan is part of the Parramatta Road strategy and it's actually a community asset for a whole suburb. And I'm really... I don't understand and I would really like to ask Councillor Wilson where I understand what he, he's trying to achieve, but I, I would like to know how, how the preservation of human life fits into this comparison to the Granville Master Plan strategy, which is for a whole suburb. Thank you. Councillor, uh, yeah. who, was, who was the first one? Through you, Lord Mayor. Hang on. He you, actually asked a question. I just wanted to answer it. You can answer the question if you wish to, wish to clarify it and then we'll move on. Is, yeah, certainly. Davis. All I am saying is, and it's quite a um, reasonable argument, and when you boil everything down, you can see that um, we could spend the entire budget on health care and so forth. 
My position was that I had a motion from the Lord Mayoral Minute that had been approved for a year and that what I wanted to have happen was I wanted work on overhead bridges and crossing points and that with a view to making our streets safer. I tried to meet with council officers. They would not meet with me. I tried to have uh, discussions, etc. And what happened then was that Councillor Prosiv put up a very fine motion, which I supported on Granville, um, on the Granville Master Plan there. But what also happened is she knew exactly the reserves to take the cash from. It was quite clear that she had staff aid when she was putting that discussion together. And consequently, I want to know why one councillor gets councillor this Prosiv treatment and another councillor gets that treatment. This is no hit at Councillor Prosiv. The Councillor Prosiv was doing the right thing by her residents and putting forward a very reasonable motion. And I want to make that very clear. My own thought was that when I then go to the... Point of order, Lord Mayor. ...the CEO... Yeah. Yeah, yes, Councillor. Point of order, Lord Mayor. Um, I believe that Councillor Wilson We're is supposed to be answering a question. question. Yeah, We've turned into uh, a, a, a speech on Magna Carta. You can speak in reply, I mean, Councillor. Thank yeah, you. certainly. Thank you. Councillor Davis. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, Lord Mayor, what really worries me about this motion is the fact that, that Councillor Wilson has actually singled out Councillor Prosif as part of the background of this motion. I am pretty new at this game compared to some of you. I've only, this is only my fourth year on council. Some councillors, I understand, like Councillor Wilson, have been here for 20 years. But in our ward, the three of us work together as best we can. Again, you know, sometimes we're not going to see eye to eye and sometimes we are going to push for certain projects over, someone, over another um, and that's often because certain groups may approach us and, you know, we may have a relationship in the community that we live in where we are actually supporting something that has been a long-time problem. It might be, you know, as simple as a broken footpath or, or a replacement tree. Um, but, Lord Mayor, in this particular instance, we've got a, a ward councillor and a, who is a, who is signal, sig, singling out another ward councillor who has been involved with the council, with council officers, with his with the other ward councillor, and I'm sure with with councillor Wilson himself, if he's been to the ward briefings, if he's been to the ward briefings, and would be fully aware of the work that's being done by the council to achieve this objective. Now, this is the second time tonight that the Parramatta Road Urban Renewal has come up for discussion, and the Granville Square is a significant, significant part of the puzzle in delivering open, open public space for those new residents of Granville, of which there are going to be thousands. No one is denying that there is a need for public safety, for road safety, for child safety. And I would like to suggest to Councillor Wilson that he may like to educate myself and others, maybe over a cup of tea, over how many motions in the 20 years you've been here have you actually put up to actually implement pedestrian crossings and implement road safety and how many of those have been successful? How many times have you taken? And if they have been successful, then that is fantastic for the community, fantastic for children, fantastic for families and anyone that is a pedestrian in this city. But to actually suggest that the council is not prioritising some motions over others, I think, is a very... Councillor Wilson, please let him just... Speak in silence, please. Councillor Wilson. Is a very Davis. sad indictment on our organisation. Our council officers work incredibly hard. They don't magically find money for a particular project because one councillor goes and asks a question. There are processes that are followed for every single project in this city. There are the correct checks and balances. We have got a... We pride ourselves on a strong 
on a strong gov- process of governance in this council and we have got expert financial advice and we have expert staff that guide us on what are the appropriate motions, the appropriate actions to take, and then we as a chamber make those decisions based on that advice. Now, I feel that this particular motion has been very well addressed by the staff. They have explained the processes that are in place already to ensure that motions are actioned, and they also talk about processes that are being put into place for the future. And again, as with the previous motion tonight, I think it's an, that, the, that the relevant councillor, Councillor Wilson, we should just let the process take its follow its follow the sorry let the process work. The process is there in place, and if you are finding that it's not working, as two years as Lord Mayor, if you weren't able to have those direct meetings with the staff, then I cannot understand what was happening during that time. You said yourself in tonight in this room that in the t- your time as Lord Mayor, you weren't able to engage with those staff. Well, maybe those people aren't here anymore. Maybe, maybe, maybe you. Um, I don't know what happened, but <laughs> I don't know what happened. But all I know is that this council is doing a mighty fine job at trying to address all of the motions that are put before it. And I think that tonight we just need to see. We need to follow the right process. Councillor Barrick. And then Councillor Yes, thank you, Lord Mayor. I'm speaking, I'm speaking against, against the motion. Yeah. Lord Mayor, this motion is extremely disconcerting. Um, in particular, paragraph B, and I'll read it out, Lord Mayor. It says, further, that the preservation of human life be made a priority. I mean, is this a joke? Is someone kidding? I mean, is Councillor Wilson seriously suggesting that this council does not place the ultimate um, care and, due, and diligence in the preservation and protection of human life? I mean, am I, am I reading this correctly? It's just an incredible indictment uh, on this council for, for such wording to be utilised, creating the impression that the council doesn't care about human life. I mean, if we don't care about human life... What on earth do we care about? You, you, you would think that that would be the very pinnacle and is the very pinnacle of everything that we do. All of our codes, our roads, our safety, footpaths, trees, uh, building codes which are, which are r- routinely being, being enforced. Paragraph B is just a complete, completely unjustified in my in my humble opinion, Lord Mayor, I'm astonished that that form of wording is being utilised in a formal council mo- in, a, in a formal council meeting. I'm just astonished. Council Tyrrell. In relation. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Council Barrick. In relation to car- in relation to paragraph A, Lord Mayor, we spend a lot of time um, investing uh, in uh, locating the right CEO, and he in turn, he or she in turn spend a lot of time in finding the, um, the correct uh, and, and appropriately qualified staff. We have to trust our staff as being the experts in their field. Now, to have a report which effectively takes away the discretion away from staff as to what priority should be allocated uh, to motions is an absurdity. Discretion is something that is paramount for the exercise of, um, of, of, of any employment contract where we must trust our staff, our CEO, our directors, our managers and, and the staff beneath them, that they will appropriately prioritise things according to their importance. I mean, do we really want to tie their hands to the extent where... We are telling them via a report as to what to prioritise and how to prioritise and we don't leave it up to their own intellect and qualifications to determine that. I mean, it's just a complete absurdity. 
I, I cannot believe, I cannot, I just cannot believe the, that, that emotion like this is actually being seriously put in this chamber. Councillor yes, Tyrrell. Lord, may I move the motion be put? Right. Yeah, we have a procedural motion from Councillor right. Zader. Is it Councillor Zader it's from? Yeah. I move that. All those in favour of the Councillor? One, two, go. We have hands up because it's, we, if we're de defeated, then it's off. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The, the, the procedural motion is one. I now We only have the one motion. In reply, Councillor, uh, thanks to Councillor Zayn okay. for that. Uh, thank you. Uh, Councillor Now, Wilson. to deal with the first furphy first, if you read the actual Part A, that Council report prepare a report into the prioritisation of Council motions. It does not list the motion, the priorities that the uh, CEO should use. It gives him significant discretion. It only says, let's open up this process. So one of us can't read. Now, the next thing I would put to you is that when we have a look at all our budget, whichever you talk to anyone in um, the medical profession, for instance, you could spend the entire federal budget on health. We could spend all our money on roads. We have decided we want to spend some on events, we want to spend some on development, we want to spend some on this, some on that and the other. There is also the matter that we have to prioritise human life. Now when you get into a boardroom situation, you will be aware that they are dealing with their little ballywick with the little bit that they control themselves. It is not an insult to say, I would like this process examined as a councillor. I would like to see how you are putting your priorities together and I'd like to know that. Now, again, um, you would think that I wouldn't have to put in a notice of motion, that simply asking at, say, a, uh, at a forum where we're, we're talking with the CEO how these are happening, that they would simply tell you that when you have a look at it, I'd put it to you, councillors. When was the last time council knocked back a councillor who only wanted a request for information? Simple as that. And you're really telling me you got elected there to lay in front of the doorways to stop the wind from blowing through and not to know how the prioritisation is done. Indeed, I will put it to you councillors, do you know currently how they are putting it together? That there is a, a committee that ha includes a CEO and um, uh, Mr Hines and so forth that sits through and says, OK, we're going to go on and we're going to let this one go through. And this is the one we're going to build. I want to know what is the criteria they're making those decisions on. Now, that is no reflection on the staff, as you have tried to do. Indeed, the whole purpose of this, and I thought that particular Councillor Barrack's speech was very illuminating. It was never intended to be an insult, but hey, if we can include this, do the old bait and switch where we won't deal with the issue, we'll come through. Now, Councillor Tyrrell says that at the Finance Committee, they know everything. Well, may, order, maybe they do. Councillor. Point of order, Lord Mayor. Yeah, I did not order? even speak on this matter. It was not raised in debate. Councilor, and therefore, it's off the topic. Yeah, Councillor Wilson, he didn't speak on the topic at all. Uh, yeah, yeah um, excuse me, Lord Mayor. Going to our code of meeting practice, could you please show me the section that's on and off topic? Well, Councillor, you, you've, also, you've also brought into play matters that were not spoken in debate. And I'll let you go on those, Councillor. Can you just not Fair argue enough. and just move Fair on? Enough, please, Lord Mayor. You, Lord Mayor. Fair enough. But I, I have to say I'm sorry that I've offended... Uh, Councillor Tyrrell, I may have gone to a different debate or a different discussion with him, but I distinctly remember him advising us and the Chamber just a few minutes ago that uh, the, uh, the, uh, what do you call it, the Finance Committee was on top of things. Now, I am not on top of those things. And I would like, a, like I get with development, like I get with the basic quarterly report, like I get with so many areas of Council, all I want is a simple report with a simple matrix saying 
this is how we're making decisions, this is how we're prioritising things, these are the decisions we've made, so that I can have a look at it going through. Because I am told that there were some 1,300 or so motions or whatever that are still to be implemented and I really believe councillors should be on top of that. I'm sorry. Thank you, councillors. So, councillors, we only have the uh, one motion. It's a pity that councillor um, Gerald didn't get to speak about uh, the safety in uh, the, in the uh, traffic committee in Granville when we saved lives there. But anyway, thanks, councillor Zeta. Uh, we, uh, we now have one motion. All those in favour of the motion by Councillor Wilson, please raise your hand. All those against, I declare the motion defeated. We now move on to questions with notice. Uh, I'll ask the, CEO, uh, the acting CEO if you could read out the, uh, the question and the answer, please. Question and notice. Through the Lord Mayor. Uh, questions taken on notice from the council meeting of the 22nd of March 2021. Um, item 17.4. What is the time frame for placing this planning proposal on public exhibition? Um, the response from uh, council staff was the decision council made was to endorse the term. Uh, oh, I'm not reading the right one there. Is that the right one? Yeah. Uh, the decision uh, council made was to endorse the terms of the draft VPA and the content draft DCP so they can be exhibited with the planning proposal council has previously endorsed. Let me stand up. The draft VPA needs to be finalised based on the terms endorsed by council. The decision on whether to finalise the draft VPA document prior to the matter being reported to council is made in discussion with the applicant. In this case, the applicant sought to the report to Council on the understanding that the draft VPA would be prepared following the Council resolution but prior to exhibition. The time taken to prepare the draft VPA documentation will determine the timing of the exhibition. The finalisation is dependent upon the time it takes to negotiate with the applicant and their solicitors, the legal document and the supporting uh, information that makes up the draft planning agreement. Council has a template VPA agreement that is used as a starting point to minimise the time taken to negotiate and finalise the agreement and minimise the number of times draft agreements are exchanged between council, council and the applicant solicitors. The time frame is highly dependent upon the response time from corresponding solicitor, solicitors and it is expected that this could take up to six weeks. Uh, during this period, the other exhibition material is prepared simultaneously. Once the planning agreement is finalised, exhibition dates can be determined and consultation letters and materials which, mu which must specify these dates can be finalised, printed and sent to allow exhibition to commence. Uh, question number two, why are the flooding controls imposed on this site different to other sites that are within the same flood level? Um, is Council making broader policy decisions around flooding within the CBD inconsistent with specific sites? Staff response was, Council resolved to defer this matter for a Councillor workshop the exhibited CBD planning proposal framework is supported by a flood study that was exhibited with the planning proposal. The flood study recognises that there is a risk associated with allowing habitable, habitable development below the relevant flood levels. The recommended controls are based on an assessment of these risks. An analysis of, of the decisions Council has made on other sites within the CBD will be provided in a workshop as part of the response to Council's resolution to defer this matter. Thank you. Uh, now, uh, members of the public, Council will shortly move into closed session of Council where members of the press and public are excluded from the meeting. Does any member of the public wish to make representation as to why an item should not be considered in closed session? If not, um, the, uh, just for the public, obviously, we will return to open session after the closed session is concluded and the CEO will announce the decisions of the councillors. Uh, councillors, I now move the meeting. We move into closed session. We have a motion then that way. Councillor Bradley, I think. Councillor uh, Tyrrell, uh, any discussion? If not, I'll move that. All those in favour? Aye. Against? Councillors, uh, staff, could you kindly close the door and we can we uh, turn off the uh, video, please, except for the. Uh, uh, the advise the decisions made in closed council, please. Thank you, Lord Mayor. 
Members of the public, Council considered the following items in closed session of, and resolved. Uh, item 20.1, legal status report as at March 2021 and resolved that Council note the report. Item 20.2, tender 31-2020, Aquatic Leisure Centre Parramatta, Carlingford High School Oval, Rosalie Way, Carlingford, Stormwater Drainage Improvement and Associated Works and resolved to approve the preferred proponent as outlined in the report. Item 20.3, Tender 7-2021, Brodie Street, Rydalmere, Streetscape Upgrade Works, and resolved to approve the preferred proponent as outlined in the report. Thank you. And on that note, uh, I'll declare the, the meeting closed at 8.45, councillors.